hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Should say we're out of practice here again. Please join me in saying the Jubilati on page 49. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. Please be seated for the first reading. Shall come forth from your body 
and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, I will uh, return to the reading of the prayer book for the saying of the psalm of the day. It's found on page 824. You will say it responsibly, alternating by the half verse, which is indicated by the asterisk. I'll say the first part. I have found David, my servant. My hand will hold him fast. No enemy shall deceive him. Nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him. And strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him. And he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend. From the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father. My God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn. And higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever. And my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever. And his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments. If they break my statutes. And do not keep my commandments. I will punish their transgressions with a rod. And their iniquities with a lash. But I will not take my love from them. Nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant. Nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever. And his throne is the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon. An abiding witness in the sky. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time in Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility of feeling. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them coming, going, and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we'll be saying Canticle 7, found on page 78. You know what? 
they say about doing the Lord's work. It is always go, go, go. But while Jesus sends out his disciples to attend to others' needs, on their return, our Lord is perfectly attuned to his disciples' needs as well. We are to follow the Lord Jesus, who did not come to be served, but to serve. We are to deny ourselves, or as St. Paul puts it, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. But zeal and fervor suggest intensity of spirit, and some of us can grow so zealous, tending to others' needs, that we forget our own. Burning the candle at both ends, as they say, skipping meals, and never taking adequate rest for ourselves. Serving the Lord with all our heart, but harming ourselves in the process, neglecting the needs of our own bodies, and not taking adequate time to meet our own spiritual needs. That is why this verse from Mark is so important for those who do the, the Lord's work. Are you feeling burnt out? Listen to these words of the Lord. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. What is it about rest that is so important? First, let's be clear. Rest is not the same thing as relaxation. We relax by drinking a beer, or a glass of wine, by watching a show on Netflix, by doing what takes little effort and loosens us up. Rest also loosens us up, but its effects are not just physical. Rest does not mean tuning out of our lives for a period of time. Rest and relaxation may resemble each other in ways, but they are clearly different things. They, they resolve in different fruit. Rest is the opposite of killing time. Rest does not kill time, it redeems it. Rest is what we need after the daily grind has ground the life out of us. When we're still alive, but spiritually dormant. When we move mechanically through our days, but without joy. Alive, but cut off from the life abundant. To those who know what I'm talking about, listen to these words of Jesus. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Now you might notice that as much as Jesus recognizes this need of rest and refreshment, Jesus allows himself and his disciples to be drawn back into serving others precisely when he and the disciples are supposed to be taking a break. Thronged by a great crowd of people in need, Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Doing the Lord's work, their rest and meal must be put off till a later time. As we continue along in the day's gospel, we see Jesus and the disciples arriving on another shore and gaining the same reception. Wherever they go, the people in need seek them out. The world is full of people in need. And the gospel ends with people coming with all sorts of ailments, being healed by Jesus. It seems safe to assume that everywhere our Lord went, he had compassion for the people, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And compassion is crucial to our calling. But it is also crucial to recognize our limitations and to have compassion on ourselves as well. Let us remember then Jesus' call. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. 
To have compassion for others takes something out of us. And we must be sure we have something to give. That we have not spent all we have in serving others. There are many people in this world, we need not look far to find them. People who are well fed and whose material needs are abundantly satisfied and who enjoy a high degree of physical health. People who seem to have everything if we look upon their physical lives, but who are deeply impoverished if examined spiritually. The trouble with the world is that it takes for granted that as long as one's physical needs are met, nothing could possibly be wrong with a person. And so, as long as there is food on the table and money in the bank, it is exceptionally rare for us to even admit our need. Needless to say, in our culture, it is especially hard for us to admit our need of direction, our need of protection, our need of a shepherd. Personal independence, we're taught, is the mark of a grown-up, and we learn that relying on others is a sign of our weakness. If only we could be like the people who flock to Jesus, not because they are in need of healing, and not because they are in need of food, not yet at least, but simply because they recognize their own need of something more. That is why Jesus and the disciples forsake rest and refreshment to provide for the people in need. Right at the moment that Jesus has recognized the needs for the body, for food and rest, we are told that Jesus began to teach the people many things. That's their need. Jesus identifies the people's need as being, first of all, spiritual. We might remember Jesus' answer to Satan in the wilderness. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He illustrates that lesson here. At this point in their mission, the disciples' own needs are set on the back burner apparently because their needs are not desperate at this time. They can put off rest to a later time. If what I've been saying sounds at all confusing, that is because there are no easy answers when we take God's word seriously. Today's gospel shows Jesus recognizing the importance of meeting our physical needs, but it also shows how Jesus came to serve, not to be served. As much as we share this calling, let us not forget that we are, all of us, sheep, and the Lord is our shepherd. Let us always turn to our great shepherd and listen for his voice. And let us, like King David, be quick to recognize that God does not depend on our works, on the works of our hands, to be glorified. For it's not the work we do, but God's work alone, the work he does through us, that sustains us. Amen. I now invite you to stand to say together the Apostles' Creed, found on page 52. I believe in God, God of our life, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven.
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For our Bishop Todd, and for all the clergy and people who serve in the name of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city of Stratford, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for relief from the floods, heat waves, and wildfires that continue to threaten so many people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and the suffering, especially Gary, Donna, Lorraine, Gary, Ralph, Mary Jane, Sandra, Michael, Delroy, Elizabeth, Rita, and for all those we name now in our hearts or aloud, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for honesty to acknowledge the pain we have caused to our indigenous sisters and brothers, and for strength and faith to take steps towards our reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died from the recent floods, wildfires, and heat waves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Remembering Clayton Ross King and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. And now let us all go in peace to love and serve the Lord.